Good morning and welcome to Tuesday Truth or Treasure. My name is Leticia and I'm so happy to be with you today. I am very excited about today's lesson <clears throat> because I needed it. <laughs> I needed it for me. Uh, I mentioned to you before that usually the things that I talk about um, are things that, that obviously that, <laughs> that I feel like the Holy Spirit has given me, but um, it's usually very practical and relates to something that I might be going through. And um, so today's message has encouraged me um, today, me, as I was just studying for it. So even if it's just for me, uh, I feel like it's done its job. Uh, so let's pray and then let's get started. <sighs> Heavenly Father. Lord, I come to you today in the mighty name of Jesus because you say in your word that we can come boldly into your presence. We can come boldly into your presence and I'm coming boldly into your presence just like your word says. Thank you, Jesus, because you are good, you are merciful, you are kind. Thank you for seating me in heavenly places right with you. Thank you so much for the authority that you have given me over the enemy. And I know that even as the enemy tries to come against me and tries to form weapons, he will not prosper because you are with me. And if you are with me, who can be against me? I thank you for the confidence and the hope that I can have in you. You are the great I am. You, For you, nothing is impossible. Thank you. That even though something doesn't look like it's happening, even though it looks like there's nothing going on, you are working on my behalf. Always. Thank you so much for every good thing that you have given me. I pray for every single person that is listening to this today. That you will pour favor and blessings on them. That you would let us dive deeper and deeper into your word. That you would grow our spiritual capacity. Lord, that you would have us learn. That you would give us ears and a heart, a softened heart to really learn and absorb. That you would have me to say only the things that you want me to say and nothing extra. Thank you so much because you are good and merciful and kind. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> today's title is called Don't Stop Believing. And um, I heard a long time ago, it's, oh, I guess it's probably been at, at least since 2016, maybe even 2015 that I heard this message. Um, and it was one of the first messages that I heard kind of like once that my relationship with Jesus started changing. I've, I've talked about this before that I grew up Christian and, but for me, it almost feels like I had a time before I was really serious. And then that time after I was really serious and in 2016, I got really serious. Uh, so things really started changing. Actually, I might've heard this message before that, um, because God was already working on me in 2014, 2015, kind of kind of working on me, but in 2016 is really when things changed for me. Um, but anyway, I heard this message and it was called, I remember where I heard it, I remember who told me to hear it, I remember who preached it, but I'm not gonna say who preached it because I don't want that to cloud um, your validity of the message <clears throat> if I give you a name and then you don't like that person or whatever. Um, but the name of the message was called Don't Stop on Six. And it's kind of a weird mess, a weird name because you don't know what he's talking about. But but he went on and talked about um, different stories, uh, not different stories. He he specifically talked about um, the story in Joshua six uh, with the Jericho walls, and he talked about that's one of the so uh, what the whole concept of the message was: don't stop before it's too soon. Um, so I want to just get right into it because as I was doing my normal uh, chronological Bible reading um, this past week, I ran into another sort of message, um, not message, but another sort of passage in First Kings when with Elijah and his servant, and it was also like a go look out six times and on the seventh time something different happened. <coughs> and it reminded me of that message from a long time ago. 
Um, so that's what I want to talk about today. So let's actually start uh, with that Jericho with that Jericho walls uh, example. So turn if you will turn to Joshua six. I'm going to read from uh, one to sixteen and then verse twenty. And I'm reading in the ESV version today. It says, now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I've given Jericho into your hand. It's with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war going around the city once. Thus you will do that for six days. Seven priests shall, shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets. Okay, so let me just say that, uh, just in regular words. So they were, gonna, they were gonna go to Jericho, they were gonna march around the city once for six days, and then on the seventh day, they were gonna march around the city seven times and then the priests were gonna blow the trumpets. Okay, that's, that's what I've read. <clears throat> Verse five, and when they make that long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city will fall flat and the people shall go up, everyone straight before them. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, go forward, march around the city and let the armed men pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horns before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the Ark while the trumpets blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall you say any word out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you will shout. <clears throat> so he caused the ark of the Lord to encircle the city going about at once. Okay, so they went around the city and then they went to the camp and spent the night in the camp. Then they rose early the next morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of the ram's horns before the ark of the Lord walked on. They blew the trumpets continually and the armed men were walking before them, and the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord while the trumpets blew continually. And on the second day, they marched around the city once, returned to the camp, and they did that for six days. <coughs> on the seventh day, they rose early at the dawn of day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you a city. Verse 20. So the people shouted, and the trumpets were blown. And as soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout. And the wall fell flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. So... This is an extraordinary story um, of of these uh, that uh, where, they, where these walls fall flat and all they did um, was shout. They marched around the city. They marched around the walls seven times for one time a day for six days and then seven times that seventh day. But <coughs> what the what I remember the sermon being about that I heard that impacted me so much is if you if you if you paid attention on day one and day two and day three and day four, they would go. I'm trying to find the actual verse. That's why I'm looking down. Uh, OK. Verse 11. And they came to the camp and spend the night at the camp. OK. So they went, they marched around, and then they spent the night at the camp. So imagine the people. So put yourself in that situation. So you're a member of this military, this great military. You have, your family might be there with you. They're all camped out. <coughs> um, you're getting ready to go to war. You're fighting. You have all your gear on. You get up, 
and you go out and you're like, we're doing this, you know, you're like, you're in the mode, you know, picture that military vibe, you know, that camaraderie, they get all crazy, or, or, you know, all of that. So picture that. So you have all of that. They're about to march around the city. We're going to take them. It's going to happen. Ah, all of that. They're not to make one single sound. So they go, they get riled up, they get dressed up, they have their weapons, everything, and they march around the city, and then they go home. So they get home, and then they spend the night. Like, nothing happened. They're eating, you know, tortillas, whatever. They're eating their dinner. And, you know, maybe their spouse is like, so what happened today? No wall came down? No, no wall came down. What did you do then? We marched around the city. And then? And then that's it. And when are we going to go? No, we're still here in this tent. So we're just, what happened? That's it. We marched around the city. So <clears throat> that was day one. And then imagine getting up on day two and doing the exact same thing. You're thinking, man, today's going to be the day. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to get dressed. They again, put on all the gear, get everything ready, march around the city. You're like, today is my day. It's going to happen today. Today's the day. It's going to happen today. And then you march around the city. You get riled up. And then you go home. And still nothing happens. And then you do it again. Day three. And then you do it again. Day four. And then you do it again. Day five. I mean, imagine day after day getting up, getting ready, marching once around, going home, <coughs> having the people at home not understand the game plan. I mean, I can imagine maybe people are like, wait, hold on. Tell me again. What did Joshua say? So you're going to march around the city and then come back home and then on the seventh day you're gonna do something different like what 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 do you do what's happening what so the, these trumpets are playing. I mean you just picture that because it would be weird right it would be weird if somebody told you to do something again and again and again and you don't see anything changing but on that last day something magical is supposed to happen um, <clears throat> so you can see that potentially these people might have been, yeah, he, they, they, they might have been uh, wondering what's different, what's hap what are we even doing? Why are we even doing this? What's happened? Nothing's even changing. So you could see they might have been discouraged. Um, but again, they get up every morning. Every morning they get up. And that's why the message that that preacher had that time was called, don't stop on six. Because can you imagine if they would have stopped on the sixth time? If they would have stopped circling on the sixth time and not gone around that seventh time? Can you imagine if on the sixth day they said, you know what, I quit. This isn't working. This is dumb. We're not doing it anymore. Can you imagine if they would have revolted, staged a peaceful protest? <laughs> Just sort of decided they weren't, they weren't about it anymore. They weren't going to do it. <clears throat> sorry um they wouldn't have had this great victory but then that seventh day came they got ready they got they got dressed they had their weapons and they marched around not once not twice but they marched around six times and on that seventh time when they shouted those walls came tumbling down but imagine for a second if they would have stopped sooner if they would have stopped believing sooner <clears throat> this the bible remember that that the word of god says that all all instruction is all of the bible is good for instruction and good for teaching so while this is a historical story and something that really happened this is also a symbolic thing that that happens to us that this falling down of a wall is a removal of an obstacle it's a new door to be open it's something that you might be believing for so what are you believing for what door are you believing for to be open and you're just you're not seeing any progress so you're thinking nothing's happening. You're marching around that. You're marching around that that wall and you're seeing there's nothing happening. Why am I doing this? Why am I keep doing this? But you know what you heard from the Lord. And so you need to be obedient. 
<clears throat> now again, I'm telling you that these things that I'm uh, that I'm reading are things that I need. I I was looking because I'm in the middle of looking for a job. I've I've mentioned before that I got laid off at the end of June, and I'm looking for a job. And um, I was looking at how many jobs I applied for yesterday, and I'm just I'll tell you what it it was it's I can't eat. It's depressing. <laughs> I really, I don't even want to talk about it too much because it's very upsetting to me. And I was looking at how many jobs and it's over, over like 65 jobs that I've applied for. It's depressing to continue to hear no, to continue to hear no. <clears throat> and I start to think, should I have taken that job offer that I got really early on? I am, you have no idea how happy I am that I did that little video on why I didn't take that job. <laughs> if you missed it it's it was early in july because that's when i got, I got a job offer and it was in july and it would have been called something like using the word of god to make a real life decision and i knew that that was the right decision i'm so happy i did that video i'm so happy i went through that doubt process thought process because right now i would have been doubting that decision and thinking if i would have known that i wasn't going to get a job offer maybe i would have taken it maybe i would have settled maybe i would have settled for something less though <clears throat> so I'm happy I reminded myself why. So this here, this circling, this, this believing for something big, something that, some wall, some new door that needs to be open. Don't stop believing. If God has said something, he will come through. Do not doubt it. Now, when I was reading, <clears throat> that wasn't actually the story that I read. I, I read this story that I'm about to cover next. So, because I found three examples, three separate examples where it's the same sort of thing where something is said to be done seven times and on the seventh time something changes. But I want you to know that times one, two, three, four, five, six probably felt like a waste of time to the person. They were like, what? Did nothing's even happening. They might have started to lose hope. And if you are stuck in, in, the, in that time period between one and six, don't give up hope. Do not stop believing. God is not a liar. And if he promised you something, you can be sure and confident that it's going to come true. <clears throat> so here's the second story. Here's because I want to build your faith. And, and I will just put a plug in here right now and say that Lenita does Faith and Freedom on Friday. And if you're not listening to Lenita, you are missing out. Because every Friday, she comes through and she, she gives you examples and stories to build your faith. Very important to listen to, to remember, do not lose hope. So this is <clears throat> sort of a faith message that I needed myself, but um, Lenita is there every Friday uh, talking about faith. So now I want to talk about Elijah in 1 King 18, 41 to 46. And I'm reading from the ESV again. <clears throat> and Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of a rushing rain. Now, there was a drought in the city. I'll have to say that first. There was a drought, been a drought. And so he's saying to the king, go up, eat and drink, because there's a sound of rushing of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. He bowed himself on the earth, and he put his face between his knees. And he said to the servant, go up now. Look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And he said, go again. Seven times. <clears throat> and at the seventh time, he said, behold, a little cloud like a man's hand is rising from the sea. And he said, go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot. And go down, lest the rain stop you. And in a little while, and in a little while, the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he gathered up his garment and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jez Jezreel. So look what happened. <clears throat> there had been a drought. And Elijah prophesied and told to Ahab, hey, go and eat and drink, 
basically don't worry about it because I hear the sound of rushing of rain. What was he hearing? What, what could he have been hearing? <clears throat> and so Ahab went and he went to eat and drink. And then Elijah went up to Mount Carmel and he prayed. He bowed himself. Now think of that posture of being on your knees with your head between your knees, the fa your face to the ground. Like you're, this is a completely submissive uh, posture. And I can imagine him praying to God come through i need this rain send the rain lord send this rain send it and when he tells a servant to go look out <clears throat> i i don't know i can just imagine how elijah must have felt when he came back and said i don't see anything but elijah said go go back and then come back go back he says i don't see anything he didn't get discouraged. And, you know, time three, go. And the servant comes back again on the third time. I don't see anything. There's nothing. He's like, go again. Think about the time four, what it felt like for the servant to run all the way there, to go and to look, and then to run all the way back and be like, I don't see anything. Then then think about it again. Elijah to still to have the faith to say, go again. Go look again. Go. And the servant runs off again. And then runs back again and says, I don't see anything. <clears throat> and then on the seventh time when he does, it's not anything huge. It's not anything huge. It's something small. It looks like the size of a man's hand. A small thing. A small hand. Behold, a little cloud like a man's hand is rising from the sea. And what did Elijah say then? Lord, I asked you for rain and you sent me a tiny little cloud. Like, did he do that? No. He said to his servant, you go and you say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and you better leave now because you don't want that rain to stop you because it's coming. It is coming. <clears throat> when his servant said that he saw a little cloud, a little cloud the size of a man's hand, and Elijah said, big rain is coming. A lot of rain is coming. So much rain that it's going to stop you. You need to leave now. Elijah was believing for something big. He was believing for something impossible, even regardless whether he sent, he sent that servant out six times, seven times and saw nothing on time one through six. There was nothing. It was bone dry. This drought had been happening and nothing was changing. What are you believing God for? And it looks like nothing is changing. Things are bone dry. You don't see it. It's not in the horizon. And you keep praying and you keep hoping for it again and again and again. And there's nothing. And you're getting discouraged. But I want to tell you, do not stop too soon. Do not stop on six. Imagine if Elijah would have stopped on six. He wouldn't have seen this. Look what he did. He prophesied. Even when he saw it, it was little. Do not despise these small beginnings. Maybe you have a beginning. Maybe something has started, but it's so small. You can't see how it can grow. But you need to believe that if God has given you a vision for something, if God has given you a dream for something, even if it's starting something small, you have to keep pressing forward. You have to keep going. What impossible thing are you believing God for? Don't not believe it because you don't see it. Don't do that because if God has said something is going to happen, it is going to happen. He is not a man that he should lie. He is not. This is, <clears throat> this is a story that I read and it reminded me of this, of this other sermon. So I thought, is there another one? Is there another time that this happened? And I found, I found another one. I found another example. And I'm showing you these examples because I feel like some people are stuck. And I, and when I say some people, I mean Leticia, me. I mean me. I feel like I'm here applying and applying a job, getting rejection after rejection, wondering what I'm supposed to be doing. Am I doing the right thing? Am I going the right way? And it is very, very, very disappointing. I could feel myself 
literally getting depressed about it. But when I read that story, and when I studied for this, I said, uh-uh, I'm getting up early today. <clears throat> I Actually, I started getting up early. I said, I'm going to start getting up earlier. I need to pray. I'm straightening my hair today. <laughs> I'm putting on my makeup today. I, today is the day the Lord has made. To, and I might be on day number five. This may be my fifth time, but I am not going to give up because I know that victory is coming and I'm not going to doubt. I'm not going to doubt it. So let's go to 2 Kings 5. And this is Naaman, the commander of the army of Syria. So I'm going to read verse 1 just to kind of describe who he is. And then right after verse 1, I'm going to skip to verse 9 <clears throat> and read from 9 to 14. Naaman, a commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry, and he went away saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out and stand and call upon the name of the Lord, his God, and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned away and went away in a rage. But his servants came near and said to him, my father, it is a great word that the prophet has spoken to you. Will you not do it? Has he actually said to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. So here it is again. Naaman going out, seeking for healing. Really seeking for healing because somebody told him to go. Somebody gave told him to go here. And so he's going because of that. Um, <clears throat> I, I believe Naaman's pride got in the way of his healing. Because he was angry. He's like, why do I have to wash myself in that dirty water when I got cleaner water at home? I thought the prophet of the Lord was going to come out and just heal me. Why do I have to do anything? So his Naaman's entitlement... Uh, here getting in the way and his pride getting in the way of his healing but even then when he finally uh became submissive and when he finally surrendered and then went and actually dipped himself seven times again imagine how he must have felt that first time he dipped and came back clean that first time he was believing for healing and it didn't happen and then the second time he believed for a healing and it didn't happen the third time he believed for a healing and it didn't happen fourth time you don't think he might have felt like giving up still going in there and dipping seven times times one two three four five six all of those times were failures they were failures each time he went in and came out he was still the same his skin was still leprous he wasn't seeing any healing so if he would have stopped and he would have said this is ridiculous i'm not doing it anymore and left he wouldn't have got his healing he would not have gotten his healing but what did the man of god say seven times do it seven times and on the seventh time according to the word of the man of god his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child and he was clean he wasn't just healed he wasn't just healed and he kept his doesn't say how old he is, but 40-year-old skin. I'm just imagining him being 40. Um, <clears throat> he was healed and he got skin like a baby. He got brand new skin, fresh skin, beautiful skin. But not on the first try, not on the second or the third or the fourth. On the seventh time. You got to know that times one through six would have been discouraging. So I just, I want to encourage you today to if you are believing for a healing, if you are believing for a new opportunity, if you are believing for a job, for another open door, for a vehicle, for anything, anything that seems impossible, for salvation of a loved one, 
for a, anything new, a new house. This We're not all believing for the same things. We're not all, you may be sitting with a job thinking this has nothing to do with me. I have a job. I don't need a job or whatever. So it doesn't matter. You may be believing for something new, but the thing is, do not stop believing. Do not stop thinking that God will not come through with what he has said. God has given me specific things that he would like for me to do. And I'm working on them. And sometimes it seems like it's small and it is impossible. And there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. But I just, this story about the cloud, about looking and seeing this, this small cloud, this really encouraged me. It encouraged me to know that, hey, th there is something coming. And though I don't see it, and though it may start small, it will grow and it will become something bigger. This this story here about healing, this is, again, it just because you don't see restoration in your body immediately doesn't mean the healing isn't happening. Doesn't mean you abandon your faith. I want to give you a couple of verses um, now on faith and on increasing your faith and not giving up. James 1, 2 to 7. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord so listen to that let him ask in faith with no doubting because the one who doubts must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord <clears throat> first John 5, 14 and 15 and this is the confidence that we have toward him that if we ask Anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Numbers 23, 19. If God has told you he's going to do something, listen to this. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he? not fulfill it joshua 21 45 not one word of all the good promises that the lord has made to the house of israel has failed all came to pass hebrews eleven six. 6 and without faith it is impossible to please him for the one who comes to god must believe that he exists and that he proves to be the one who rewards those who seek him second corinthians 5 7 for we walk by faith faith and not by sight so if you're stuck on days one two three four five six you don't give up just because you don't see it with your natural eye because we walk by faith and not by sight having full confidence that he's going to do what he said he's going to do the seventh verse huh i didn't notice that i have seven verses that's pretty exciting not on purpose but clearly god knew <laughs> Is Hebrews 11 1. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, this comes down to a faith thing. I just, my message today is for you is don't stop believing. Even if it seems impossible, even if it seems like nothing's happening, even if it looks like there's no possible way this could happen. Don't stop believing for your miracle because it wouldn't be a miracle if it wasn't impossible. It would not be. So God wants us to think big. We actually can't think as big as he can provide. Um, don't stop believing and don't lose hope. I hope you were encouraged today. I will see you next Tuesday uh, for another message. And I don't know, maybe we'll go deeper on one of these stories. Um, I really enjoyed learning about them. Uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.